Hello, I'm Don Niemeyer, owner of Story Coffee Company in downtown Colorado Springs in Acacia Park. I'm Abigail Baum and I am a co-owner of Loyal Coffee. Well, it's just great to be a part of a, an amazing local coffee culture. Cafes like Urban Steam, Wild Goose, Story, Switchback, Loyal, and so many others. Loyal is a few blocks this way and Wild Goose is a couple blocks that way and there's other great coffee shops. There are so many awesome places to grab coffee, to enjoy intimate time with friends, or to grab a snack. Because the more great coffee shops there are and the more great work that's being out there, the more that we're all gonna benefit. I think what draws so many people to this city and, and makes it feel like home. A couple of years ago, we had an employee that got really seriously injured. The coffee community really rallied around one of our own. While she was in recovery, she couldn't make coffee. Baristas all throughout the city were signing up to be able to work those shifts for her. So during that time, her name was Eliza, she got all of the tips, she continued to get paid. I don't know if that's true or not, nationally or in other places, I can tell you this for a fact. Colorado Springs, that's what people do. That's pretty awesome. But increasingly what we're finding out is that when we're at those national competitions, people say, I've heard great things about Colorado Springs. So now, not only with the aspect of judging, but also in regards to um, roasting, and brewing and the barista competitions. We've had people in all of those competitions that have succeeded pretty uh, impressively. So Colorado Springs is really getting on the map. And it blows my mind the support that Colorado itself and Colorado Springs gets in those events. Abigail, Dawn, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Um, if you guys could just introduce yourselves to these fine folks with a, a quick word about the, the business that you do here in our downtown. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I'm Abigail, and I am one of the six barista owners, a part of Loyal Coffee. We have a cafe downtown uh, on South Nevada, and we also roast coffee out of uh, Ivy Wild School uh, within our roastery. Yeah. And my name is Don Niemeyer, and my wife and I, Carissa, we own Story Coffee Company. It is the, uh, the weirdest coffee shop that you'll ever see. We're chasing, <laughs> I always say we're chasing simplicity, trying to focus on one thing, do it well. Um, we're, in a, we're, we're the only tiny house coffee shop where customers come inside the coffee shop that I'm aware of. Um, if you know of another one, let me know. I still have, after three and a half years, I haven't found another one. Uh, we were, uh, I was told to mention we were recently named most beautiful coffee shop in Colorado, or, or in the state of Colorado by Architectural Digest magazine. Um, thank you. Something that I had nothing to do with. Our interior designer, Robin Pasley, can take credit for that. But anyway, that's, that's who we are. Awesome. So, first question, Abigail. I and this is weird because Russ has all these notes in here related to you know the fact that he's your dad. I'm not your dad. Awkward. Um, <laughs> I may have given him food poisoning before this event just so that we could. You did it on purpose. I'm sorry. Woo. Here I thought loyal coffee was all about being you know hospitable. You know I, you know you guys have this form factor and, and commitment to excellence that uh, raises the bar in our city. But apparently you also poison people. <laughs> it's it's just a it's a side thing. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Just family only? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you've got this ethos, local, community yeah. commitment, hospitality, and this has been vital to the c growing coffee culture in Colorado Springs. And from your formation, there's this, uh, it's distinctive that, that you are a company that is owned and operated by a collective of s some of the most accomplished baristas and roasters in town. Can you talk about the unique values at the heart of Loyal Coffee? Like how those values fit in with or are reflected in the coffee culture that is developing in the city at large? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. <laughs> Thanks, your dad wrote it. <laughs> um, I mean, really simply, our whole reason for being is community by way of coffee. We care a lot about coffee, and when you come into Loyal, we're gonna give you a damn good cup of coffee. We spend a lot of time on the details, to serve something that's delicious and high quality, but also at the end of the day, that cup of coffee is a vehicle in which to love people. Mm. Whether that's guests coming in through the door to grab that cup of coffee, or uh, our mailman coming in to deliver things, or the community that we serve within. Uh, and that is kind of why we wanted to open up a cafe, why we wanted to roast coffee, 
uh, was to pour this energy and the support that we were receiving from the, from the community and pour it back into the community. Mm -hmm. um, we believe, uh, as I think the entire coffee industry does here in Colorado Springs especially, that we need to water the grass at our feet. And that's really key. The support that we get from the community, the people who come into our, our shop, the people that get excited uh, when we go to competition, we're able to use that energy and then pour it back in. I, I think of things like our Just Loyalty card, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. It's this little card uh, that uh, has like a couple different coffee shops. We've got 10 in all. We actually have two cards out right now. If you're at the cafe anytime soon, you should grab one. Uh, but it has all these different coffee shops within the city. You go to these different shops, uh, grab a cup of coffee, get a little stamp, and when you fill it out, you can come back to Loyal to get a free cup of coffee. <laughs> And that's really cool. It's a good conversation starter uh, and a great way to plan out a caffeinated week in Colorado Springs because there are a lot of really great places to go. Uh, another, another one of my favorite ways that, that that energy kind of put back into the community is, uh, is the Artist Alliance, which is this really cool program that we did um, and will continue to do. Uh, the last artist that we worked with was Elizabeth Selby, who is an amazing painter and illustrator in, in town. Um, but we were able to purchase some work from her and then make some prints and distribute them within the community while also really like encouraging her in it and being able to, to blast out about her over our social media, which is just really cool that, that the community supports us and that means that we can support the community uh, to, to do bigger and better things. Yeah, viewing, viewing yourselves as a, as a platform for you know, fostering the kinds of trends in Colorado Springs that you want to see. I, I definitely see that in the disloyalty card, fostering a better coffee culture with the uh, Artist Alliance. You know, this is, this is a woman who was featured in New American Painter. Like, she's, she's not hurting, but she also didn't have, uh, didn't, didn't have the sense that the community knew who she was or cared. And you're like, well, we've got all these people coming in to buy coffee. Let's turn them into patrons of the arts. Like, to, to me, that's, that's interesting the way that a coffee shop can be a vehicle for so many other great things within a town like Colorado Springs. Oh, yeah. I mean, a business is, is a business, and a lot of times you get like, emotionally tied to it. But at the end of the day, it's this really cool machine that generates energy that's able to be put back into the community that, that helps it run. And that's when it's really cool, when it can impact the team members that work in there day in, day out, the, the guests that come in, and, and just the people that live next to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's awesome. So Don, first of all, I just want to say thank you for choosing Colorado Springs. You know, <laughs> I feel like you guys have a unique product in our city, which we're so grateful for. And Don, like Brother Luck, um, have similar stories in the sense that they've, they've, they've traveled the country. They've seen a lot of restaurants and coffee shops, but yet here you are in Colorado Springs and everything about you guys is unique from the whole, t the simplicity of, of your business to, the, to um, the, the tiny house. You guys have a, just a beautiful story. And speaking of story, you know, in the video we, we, we heard about how the, the coffee community rallied around one of the staff that was injured, so unique to our city. So here's what I want you to talk about. Speak to the uniqueness of this community. You know, what story are you guys trying to tell here? And how that story interfaces with the larger story of the city? And how do you go about writing the best story? Well, you know, a lot of people know that we came from Portland to Colorado Springs. What, what a lot of people don't know is that we actually went to Portland from Colorado Springs. So 14 years ago, we lived here, actually worked at Starbucks and got by starting coffee there. And then we left here and went to Portland, Oregon, spent about nine years there. So when we, when we were traveling the country, we were not planning to come back to Colorado Springs. In fact, we were definitely not coming back to Colorado Springs because right? we've already been here. You know, like, we well, could do something different, right? But what we, uh, we, we did come back through town visiting some friends. And so we were traveling around. We were looking at places like, you know, Chattanooga, Tennessee or Burlington, Vermont, you know, kind of like middle-sized cities and thinking about, like, we could be there, we could be there, you know. Well, we came back through Colorado Springs just to visit some friends and we were surprised to experience like you know if we had the whole if we were honest and held the experience of experiencing Colorado Springs up against these other experiences that we have just driving into a cities without any preconceived ideas we have moved to Colorado Springs you know so that's what we did you know Boomerang. so yeah so uh, even though it wasn't on our radar that's what we ended up doing because of the you know everything that everybody's been talking about tonight uh, with regards to story um, you know and you talked about you know telling your best story uh, we named our 
business, a story, coffee company for a number of reasons. One is we like to, sh you know, the idea of sharing the stories of the beautiful coffees that we um, have discovered traveling around and whatnot. Um, but, you know, as you kind of peel the different layers of that onion back, um, you know, another key component of that is the stories of the community and the stories of the people that you're around. You know, for example, that's why we, um, one of the things that we do is we give a percentage of all of our sales to the Marion House, who is taking mm -hmm. care of disadvantaged people and people that are, you know, down on their luck or whatever, feeding the hungry, et cetera. We want to do that because we understand the value of being interested in and participating in the stories of those around us. We're in Acacia Park, and so there's a lot of those folks around us. We look at like we need to be a part of their story as well, you know. Um, and uh, you mentioned the girl that that was injured. You know, all of those baristas that just came of their own volition and said, "Hey, I, how, what can I do to help?" They weren't trying to build their own story. They weren't trying to tell their own story. They were interested in making the story of somebody else better. You know, they were interested in her story, the girl that, you know, that was in need. And, um, you, know, if, you know, you might have saw in the video, we have a thing on our wall that says, live your best story, you know. And everybody knows at their core that the pathway to living your best story is to care about and participate in the stories of those around you. And so, that's, I think that's how you tell your best story. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, what I love about the way both of you have named your know, business is that the, the, your value is in the name of your business, Loyal Coffee, Story Coffee. So our coffee culture has developed over the years um, from something that was hidden or smaller to this amazing national scene and in many ways rivals the national market. So what would you say, what, how, how can you guys speak into what's happening? What do you guys think is happening in our, in our city? Either one of you. <laughs> well, you know, um, pe different speakers tonight have alluded to it. You know, there's, there's a, it's, a, it's a confluence of a number of different factors. Certainly the natural beauty, the livability, you know, the, the access to outdoors experiences, that kind of thing. But we're also, uh, we're, we're, we're like pivoting into a moment of just, um, you know, you mentioned that we traveled around. We, we got the experience of just like experiencing a bunch of different cities. What we're having in this city is unique. We're in a moment here in this Ooh. city where everybody is on the same page of like, and you've, and you've heard it said again and again, we're not, we're not all trying to build our own little kingdom. We're like, we're, we're in it to make this city better. And of course, we're all trying to build our own businesses, mm -hmm. um, but we're doing it in the context of being a part of something greater. And it is a delight and a, and a privilege and a, a treat to be a part of something bigger than your own little you know, thing good. that you're building in. Uh, this, this community is really unique. Um, I've lived in a couple, a couple different places as well, and the amount of support, of course, that comes from the community itself, but even just within the coffee industry, I think is what really sets it apart. Um, this idea of the raising tide raises all the ships. This idea that, that we can be supportive and collaborative and also challenging to one another in a way that can really open up the doors for, for making better coffee, for uh, serving guests in more intentional ways, for upping the expectation that a guest has when they walk into a space. Mm -hmm. um, and the way that we, we have been able to work together as, as a community to be cheerleaders to each other and, and also encourage each other to be better uh, is, I think, one of the biggest things that, that has been propelling us and will continue to. Um, you know, there are some people who will even talk about the, that sometimes Colorado Springs, that coffee scene, can, you know, it's not, it's not like, it can rival Denver. People <laughs> come down from Denver to come and hang out with yeah. our coffee. That's, that's pretty amazing. We are amazing, so, you know. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> And oh, I, I, I can yeah. certainly speak into that. When, when Wild Goose first opened, we had people coming out all the way from Boulder yeah. to, to check it out. And so we have, we have something special. There's a, I, I also work for the Colorado Springs Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Corporation. And uh, last year, um, Stephanie Copeland, she is a former director, executive director of the office of the Colorado Office of Economic Development. And she came to speak at a small business um, event that we had. And um, I hit her up on the way out. We are walking to her vehicle and just um, talking. And one of the things she told me was, you know, I get the opportunity to visit a lot of 
Colorado cities, and there's something special in Colorado Springs. She says a lot of people talk about collaboration, but you guys do collaboration. It's so crazy we, we live in a city where competitors are also friends. That's just um, bizarre. So you guys exemplify that really well. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Uh, thanks, guys. That is all we get, all we have time for with, with you guys, but uh, we, we sure appreciate what you've had to say. Please uh, help me thank them one more time. Woohoo!